Now, one year ago, we spoke to our next guests about their plans for promoting African goods here in Ireland, relying on trade rather than aid to kickstart economies in various African countries. So 12 months into the project, how's it all working out? Well, to find out, I'm joined now by Sally Sawaya, who is marketing manager of Meru Herbs Cooperative in Kenya. And I'm also joined by Conal O'Quive, director of Value Added in Africa. Thank you both very much indeed for coming back to us uh, this year. Um, it's, it's an exciting time. I mean, you're launching these products that are sitting in front of you have all been launched on the Irish market. Yes, yesterday in Donnybrook Fair, we were delighted that Sally, joined by the Kenyan Charged Affair from the embassy, it was launched on by the Nigerian ambassador. Five gourmet brands all now selling in Donnybrook Fair and in Fresh and a number of other gourmet shops around Ireland. Fully produced, processed, packaged, start to finish leaving Africa like that rather than raw materials. Really? So they come, they're, they're labelled, they're everything. They leave Africa like this. Yes, everything is done in Africa. It gives me a lot of pride, a lot of validation to actually see our products in, in Ireland. Looking back 10 years ago, we used to send bulk products in terms of raw materials. We'd get the fruits and send, sell them out when they are in their raw form, but now we're able to process them. From that, we have two factories. We have a jam factory that actually processes high quality gourmet, gourmet jams and sauces that can actually compete internationally. That and is everything amazing. is done by the women. They, they cook the fruits, they, they put them in their jars, they close everything. I mean, they put them up in a 20 foot container and export. That's incredible. That's, that tomato and basil, that's from your own cooperative yes, it in is. Kenya. Yes, it is. I, I mean, that looks, I don't know if we can, yeah, we can see it there. Just, yeah, so we can see that. I mean, that just looks beautiful. But can I ask you, I mean, you've moved in a decade, as you say, from exporting bulk produce mm -hmm. to exporting this kind of processed um, food, much, lots of value added to it. How difficult a process was that to do? I mean, did you have to get involved in all kinds of health and safety rules, buy lots of equipment? I mean, I presume you have to pass a lot of r rules to get into Europe. Of course we have. Firstly, they have to be organically certified. And to do that, we had to bring in Soil Association from UK. So they come all the way to Kenya, they certify us, and then they give us a certificate. And then we are able now to produce and put the organic mark on it. And, and once it gets to the market, you fully fully assured of the quality. Secondly, we've had to put HACEP in place. because what, What's that? HACEP. Oh, it's a HACEP food safety food safety certification. Food safety oh, okay. Yeah, to make sure that they meet the quality standards. And for us, it's a bit expensive, but it's worth going into the expense because it means our products can actually compete. Yeah, I mean, that's the key thing. We actually have a, a clip of you, uh, Sally, last year in mm -hmm. Donnybrook Fair here in Dublin. Just take a look at this. The, well, that's the two of you there now meeting the staff. So I suppose that's when your products first went on the shelves mm -hmm. there. Yes. What kind of response have they had? Are people buying them? That there is Sally's packaging before the work that we did with her and Irish designer Paul, Paul Ratican helped them get their new labelling. And so that orangey pack that you saw was before and the one here today yeah, is the Yeah, they're quite after. different, aren't they? Yeah. And so, that has been key to helping them to get the market, both here and in Britain. Yeah, I mean, that one looks like a fairly basic product, whereas what you have here, I mean, you have another, what's that, a Swazi Kitchen Mango Jam. There it is there in front that, of you, Sally. That's from a separate co-op, another co-op that we work with in Swaziland, and their, their product also selling here and in Britain. Yeah, uh, Star Lager from Nigeria and Tusker from Kenya. And of course, Nigeria has got massive brewers yeah. there, aren't they? Absolutely. And the Madagascar chocolate from Madagascar. When that leaves Madagascar as chocolate, it's four times more is earned in Madagascar compared to if they just sell the raw beans four away to the multinational. Four times more. So, yeah. the, I mean, and that, we, we've had a lot of controversy around cocoa beans and exploited workers. Mm -hmm. So, this is part of the solution, is yes. it really, to All processing about value there? addition. Because you employ people to actually add the value and send it out as a finished product as opposed to sending raw material. Mm. Then having it sent back to you at a price that is not even affordable to you. Yeah, yeah. And in terms, of, it's not just the food then with the labelling. There's a lot of expertise that has been brought into the local communities as well that can be applied to all kinds of other things you'd imagine. Definitely, definitely. Skilled employment. Yeah. 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 Today's launch of these products was taking place in, alongside a forum that is the Africa Ireland Economic Forum taking place in UCD, which is organised by the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Because the change is happening in Africa, Ireland's relationship with Africa can change as well. 
And so we're beginning to see the possibility to move beyond an aid relationship to actually having an equal trading relationship and full economic relationship with Africa. And, and what have been the blocks? I mean, a lot of the blocks in the past have been problems within Africa, political systems, corruption. I mean, it wasn't just about getting machines in that would pass the safety standards in food. Are these also being addressed? Quite significantly, you see big amount of change happening within Africa. First of all, trade is one of the areas that is least susceptible to corruption. So, so we find that that is not an issue. The institution, the requirements of standards, that's a challenge for people to meet. But even when they do meet them, there's actually institutional practices by the supermarkets and other groups at this end of the world. And how to penetrate those is really difficult for a group like Sally's in, in Kenya. That's what we're here to do, is to help them to penetrate those. Yeah? Uh, and that's, that's part of what the forum is looking at today, is mm -hmm. how how we can improve the way and the access for that. And have you any figures as to how much trade we do with Africa? We're selling to Africa about twice as much as we used to sell to them 10 years really? ago. So actually their growth is very good for Ireland. It well, increases what are we jobs selling in to Ireland. Africa? Uh, a lot of food products and also software and IT products and pharmaceuticals. So those areas that Ireland is strongest in, as Africa grows, they actually end up buying more of those from us. And what about the trade inward, inward trade from Africa? Very disappointing. Very, very slow. We're buying less and less. And that's some of the challenge that, that Ireland is committed to having a two-way trade relationship. But if we're only selling and we're not buying, then it won't end up so a balanced that's relationship. That's the key issue that you're trying to address is to yeah. 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 help us and buy And these more. products leave Africa at multiples of the price that the raw material would. And that's where the transformation is available. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you both very much for coming into us again. And the very best of luck with it. Uh, Sally, I mean, it's amazing to see how far it's come in just a year. Thank you so very much. So hopefully this time next year we're hearing about the Irish trade figures thank going up. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.